All right, I hope that you can hear me now and you can see my screen. Um, please message me on Telegram if you can't. But yeah, I think that's the case now. Uh, so hello, hello everyone. Sorry for the short delay. Uh, that's due to my new computer, uh, which I had to um, uh, set up to, to allow screen sharing. So straight to the topic. Um, thank you very much for uh, having me here remotely on this, uh, you know, my favorite uh, conference uh, in the entire uh, crypto um, and, and finance space. Um, I think that it builds my presentation will build quite nicely into what was said before uh, by by the, the other speakers. Uh, I will present, I think, a slightly different perspective. Yet I think that on the most um, important topics, we uh, very much agree with the previous speakers. So let me start with a very uh, bold statement that the blockchain will disrupt securities markets. Uh, that's probably something that uh, many of you have been hearing for a long time at this conference and, and others over the past years. Yet the question I'd like to ask is, why do people say so? What is exactly in this technology that um, make, you know, makes all of us uh, participate in this conference as speakers or as participants um, discussing uh, use of blockchain or broadly speaking D DLT on securities markets for securities issuance, trading, and all the other activities uh, in this industry. So I think that I will take a little bit um, um, non-standard way of answering that question, and I will try to consider those uh, most often um, uh, listed, uh, you know, reasons uh, for 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 um, you know the change that the blockchain might bring to securities trading. So one of the first claims that is being um, made about it, um, about you know the, the fantastic feature of the blockchain used um, for for various activities related to securities, is increased liquidity. Yet I dare to think that uh, it's not necessarily the case, at least for now, uh, because even if you uh, you know achieve a larger or, or increased liquidity in terms of individual assets, right? You take a, an asset class that was not very liquid before, um, you know, the overall uh, mar uh, low market liquidity will mean uh, that you, you know, at the end of the day, you you, you are not achieving much, right? This is be because of the l user experience limitations of the technology used, a very small user base, lack of standards and everything. So at the moment, it is very difficult to think of mm, increased liquidity using blockchain uh, because, uh, you know, it's just not going to happen very easily. Then um, you have the claim that, uh, you know, uh, the blockchain will bring um, continuous 24-7 and borderless trading. Yet, I, I again, I, I think that it's not necessarily true. Uh, the geographical reach of financial products, uh, including on securities markets, is not due to the, you know, to the limitations of technology. Because, you know, the internet is already global, right? You could think of products on the internet that are, you know, available to, 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 to use for, for any group of users from uh, anywhere in the world where the internet is, um, is on. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the case is here that uh, uh, you don't have this because of regulatory limitations and some related costs, right? This is not a technology limitation. Then you have a claim about efficiency gains, right? So that you, you are going to uh, have something that is much faster or scalable. Yet, I, I think that this is probably one of the largest myths here because blockchain, but they, by its or related technologies, uh, they by its very nature prefer security, immutability, or decentralization over speed and scalability, right? So this technology is not about increased performance. It was not designed to have... Um, you know, to have trading, you know, to to, um, to, to result in, in faster trading or, uh, you know, achieving some, some other efficiency gains. The goals were slightly quite different. Um, and, you know, it's just not possible at the moment that this technology outperforms uh, the existing ones in terms of, again, yeah, speed or scalability. And then you have the something that was uh, discussed on the panel before, before um, at, at least marginally, about the lower costs. I mean, no one knows yet uh, 
whether uh, you know uh, th there would be some some lower costs and cost savings. They are expecting down the road. This is why you know I think everyone is 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 working on the solutions. Yet the cost barrier, the investment to be made, uh, uh, seems very high. And here I totally agree with the with the statement that it's about infrastructure building, which requires a lot of investment. Uh, but I I dare to do, do, to say that the you know that those savings that are expected uh, that they're, they're, this is going to take years before we get there. So now the question is, are, the, are, are those promises false? You know, uh, are we talking about some, some you know, false uh, vision of, of uh, large promises that can be delivered? And the answer that I'm proposing is that they are just not accurate at the moment. You know, it's it, this, this is probably going to take years before primarily technology development um, gets us to a state in which we would be able to achieve all of those advantages. But, um, and this is one of my main messages here, this, is, this uh, doesn't mean that there are no other advantages that are not that often being mentioned um, that, um, you know, wouldn't make this technology a game changer right now. And here, um, I would say that the promise of this technology, specifically in securities markets, derives from open permissionless protocols. This is the game changing um, element uh, that we are sometimes forgetting about. Yet this is this is the, um, the feature that is going to, uh, to to change securities markets, even in the short to medium term perspective. And I think that it's worth to think about um, open and permissionless protocols from two perspectives. These are, you know, two sides of the same kind. The first one is about digital assets, and the second one is about universal settlement layers. And now, briefly about both. Digital assets, you know, uh, the entire day um, of the conference tomorrow will be more or less devoted to this aspect. And, uh, you know, we are discussing this today as well when talking about uh, tokenized securities. Um, but this is, you know, this is the main feature that is already, you know, uh, uh, clearly uh, visible from Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. We have assets that are capable of, uh, you know, self-custody that, um, you know, you, you, you can use uh, some uh, custodians, but you, you you don't have to. You can exercise self-custody. Uh, this is about scarce assets. Uh, you know, in the case of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you can talk about some absolute uh, scarcity, right, enforced by technology. But even with respect to digital securities, you can think of um, what I call relative scarcity, right? So that doesn't mean that those assets cannot be inflated if there is like any mistake or error. But at the same time, this is verifiable on, a, on an open and transparent ledger. Um, and it is, um, you know, completely transparent, um, uh, and, and uh, you know, able to be seen or monitored by anyone. And then, of course, programmability. This is, uh, this is one of the main features so that those assets, including digital securities, are programmable and are able to be, you know, somehow plugged into various systems. And those systems primarily include uh, what we call universal settlement layers, which are first permissionless, which basically means that they are uh, that they are uh, you know there is absence absent um, absence of any bias that they are objective that they behave as planned that they do not have central operator. They are peer to peer. This is very often overlooked. Um, that uh, you know those settlement layers they allow for completely peer to peer transactions like in the case of some basic cryptocurrencies and that should apply to digital securities as well. They are non custodial. Right, so there is uh, a possibility for no intermediary that take custody over your funds or your assets, uh, you know, in 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 various um, uh, activities that you are performing. They are transparent and open. Very, uh, you know, uh, fundamental um, um, feature of uh, blockchains and and universal settlement layers. They are composable. This is very important, and this is a, a truly. Um, uh, you know, game-changing feature, which is about connecting various blocks and various uh, pieces on infrastructures, something that was much, much harder, uh, if not impossible, uh, until now. And then they are secure because they were built um, using um, cutting edge cryptography to achieve high level of security. And now look at this. Those features, um, they are, uh, um, uh, you know, this is not about some incremental improvements. Uh, that are going to be made to the existing infrastructures. 
this is a truly about um, you know um, uh, building something new. And while I completely agree that uh, you know uh, I think that this example uh, by Simon about the heart uh, surgery is is very uh, appropriate, especially from the perspective of uh, of an incumbent player. Yet that doesn't mean that we are going to see just small improvements. We are going to see something much much larger. Uh, that would provide some level of disruption and and large changes in which uh, in 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 the way uh, that uh, securities trading operates today. But there is one missing factor because what I've just described this is more or less about decentralized finance, DeFi, right? This this um, uh, booming sector uh, that largely uh, refers to uh, to, to uh, you know simple crypto assets. But there is one missing factor that uh, that adds to digital assets and open and permissionless um, uh, uh, protocols and universal settlement layers, and this is about a link to reality which is facilitated by regulation. And here, just a few simple truths. The regulation will not go away. This is uh, for, you know, this is what we know. This is 100% sure. Regulation will become more comprehensive. This is what we know already with the Token Act in Liechtenstein, with the developments with Mika regulation and DLT pilot um, um, uh, at the EU level, uh, with the developments with digital uh, bear debt instruments in Germany, and all of those other um, aspects. But what's important is this, this regulation will provide a link between technology, uh, between those open permissionless layers that I mentioned and mainstream securities markets. Uh, for example, thanks to tokenized securities and other real world assets. So now um, we will uh, see some new generation securities markets that will build upon those, uh, you know, really uh, to some extent philosophical, but at the same, at the same time, very practical um, uh, developments, uh, open permission protocols uh, using digital assets and universal settlement layers, uh, uh, but with maintaining high regulatory standards to s build safe bridges to real world and real world assets. And that's something uh, uh, I will need to uh, spend uh, just a few seconds on explaining this uh, because I have to end this presentation. But this is something what we are building at Fountain.ly, a new startup out of Liechtenstein who is leveraging uh, the technology and those fundamental value proposition, uh, propositions as, as we see it, as I explained on this presentation, at the same time by maintaining high regulatory standards to uh, to, to build access to decentralized securities trading. Thanks for your time um, and see you later at the conference.